Hey everybody, it's time for the show that the gear manufacturers dread, Fearless Gear Reviews. Now this is my patron funded review show where I try out a piece of gear without any corporate fuckery involved so you get the straight picture about what the fuck is actually going on. Wow, that's two fucks before the first minute. Looks like someone's getting demonetized. Oh man, the Mesa Cab Club. I can't think of a single piece of gear that reminds me more of scraping dog shit off the bottom of my shoes like the original Cab Club. In theory, it was a great idea. Make recording your guitar simpler. Instead of dicking around miking up your cabinet, hook a wonder box up and record directly into your home recording setup. The only problem was, it sounded like shit and kind of made me want to vomit. <laughs> no, seriously, it did sound pretty awful. Even the cabinet impulses we were using five years ago were infinitely better than what the cab clone was offering. The problem with it was that it was an analog piece of gear trying to emulate another analog piece of gear. And that's really not easy to do. And unfortunately, Mesa behaved rather badly in the wake of all the criticism. We all saw that Anderton's video where they said it sucked and then the video mysteriously disappeared. Why whatever could have happened to it? Gee, I don't know, but the replacement video featuring a Mazer rep and a couple of very uncomfortable hosts explaining how they were using it better was certainly believable. Then for an encore, some twit on Mesa's Instagram went ban crazy at the slightest sign of criticism. Hell, they even banned me for pointing out that they were banning people. Somebody just went a little bit power mad there, didn't they? Anyway, I suggested at the time that a rethink was seriously needed. The load box portion of the cab clone worked well enough, but the cabinet emulation sounded like fried assholes. A digital cabinet simulation will work far better, as we've seen, with competing products offered by two notes. The Torpedo Live and Captor do the job beautifully as they're a hybrid of analog and digital. And when it comes to silently recording tube amps, this is my favorite approach, a hybrid system. Now, five years later, we finally have all of that cutting edge technology here in the brand new Cab Clone IR. At first glance, it kind of looks like a bigger torpedo captor with a digital section for loading in the cabinet IRs, all for the low, low price of $599. Meanwhile, the new Torpedo Captor X is stereo and only $549. Wow, thanks for the awesome savings there, two notes. Okay, so obviously the big improvement over the original is the fact that it is an analog load box with a digital cabinet loader. And this is great if you're a gigging musician. Plug this into your amp, plug your cabinet in, and hand the XLR off to the sound guy, and you are good to go. And it comes loaded with 16 impulse responses of Mesa cabinets. Oversized, traditional, 1x12, 2x12, and you get a mic choice. Either a 57 paired up with a ribbon, or a condenser paired up with a ribbon. Let's check that out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through the different cabinets loaded on the Cab Clone IR and just see what we get. We've got the Angle Savage 120 plugged in, and a little bit of background noise. It's a noisy fucking studio, what can I say? Not bad, let's see what we get here. Let's go through the different settings. And the next bank. That is a 1x12 recto cab uh, mic'd with a condenser and a ribbon. Interesting. Okay, 
Okay, so out of all the choices, I like cabinet one on bank A the best. And that's great because it's the obvious choice. Flip it on, it's going to sound good. It's gonna get you where you wanna go. I think a couple of these might actually be usable for metal tones. The big drawback, of course, is they can't actually blend impulses. It's more of a take it or leave it situation. So let's put them to the test and hear just how these sound in a mix. All right, so this is normally where I would cut to the full band mix playing. And I was just in the process of hooking everything up. I got the Cab Clone IR here. I got my reamp box. I got the Angle Savage back there. We're getting a pretty interesting tone. Only problem is I go to kick on record and, and I'm getting this. Like, wow. That's pretty serious. Here's the insane thing. I'll pick this up. The noise goes away a little bit. Let it go. Holy shit. Oh, but hit the ground lift. Same thing. Now, I'm not going to just shit on the Cab Clone IR here. There is some pretty serious RF problems here at this studio. It's one of the reasons I'm going to be happy to be getting out. And I can't say this is going to happen in your situation. But be aware, if you are reamping with the Cab Clone IR, there could be a noise problem. By way of comparison, let's hook up the original Torpedo Captor and see what we get. All right, so we got the Torpedo Captor in place and it doesn't seem to be anywhere nearly as severe. And if I lay hands on it, it's not changing the tone. So this all leads me to believe that the Cab Clone IR may have a shielding problem. And if that's the case, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run the clip of the whole band playing, but I'm going to leave the noise in place. And you guys tell me whether or not it's a deal breaker. I'll leave that up to you. All right, now I was hoping this was gonna be great. And although the tones are pretty good, that noise, yeesh, it's bad enough with one track, but when you start stacking tracks on top of each other, it gets pretty terrible very quickly. So when it comes to reamping, I will definitely be going with the captor instead of the cab clone. There is absolutely no way I could ever put this on a client's record. Once again, I have to stress, your results may vary, but in this case here, it's a total deal breaker. I just need something that can handle the grounding issues better. This has got a serious shielding issue, and that's unfortunate. However, it's not all bad. If you're not reamping, one of the big strengths is that you can treat the Cab Clone IR as a USB stick and just swap out the factory IRs for custom ones, including your own custom blends, and use those live, so that is pretty cool. And the really good news is that for home recording, you can bypass the included IR loader and just use whatever VST you choose via the line out and load whatever IRs you want. In my case, I'm not a gigging musician, so this is the way I'd normally go. Actually, that's not true. I'd just skip the cab clone altogether and get the Torpedo Captor for $269. But that's just my situation. If you absolutely positively have to have the Mesa badge on your IR loader and you're not ramping, then this certainly does the job. It's just a shame that the ground lift switch on the back here really didn't do much. I mean, let's take a closer look at this thing and pop the top off and just see the amazing build quality and... Are those two notes chips? <laughs> 